Hi, good afternoon, everyone. This is Don Gulling, CEO of Vertex Consulting. Thank you for joining us today. We appreciate your attendance, and we're looking forward to sharing some interesting and enlightening content with you about uh, better management of cybersecurity through uh, our cloud solution. Um, we're all facing a, a inundation of security threats and a constant cavalcade of attacks. And I know a lot of us are also suffering from what we call uh, either threat fatigue or alert fatigue, where you kind of see almost too much information. That's been a major trend lately. Um, so managing cybersecurity can be, you know, kind of complex and taxing. That said, we're we're trying to focus on a solution and, and give you tools to reduce that management burden, to make this simpler, to make it more effective, and to give you back some time. Um, that said, it's also got to still give you all the cybersecurity benefits that you need, a multi-layer defense to protect you and your data from this kind of ocean of uh, attacks that we're seeing from mostly overseas, of course. Today, we're pleased to have a guest speaker, uh, Stephen Helm. Stephen is a senior product marketing manager for WatchGuard Technologies. He's been in the cybersecurity industry for many years. He's an expert on these things, and I'm excited to have him here. With that said, I'd like to turn it over to our guest speaker, Stephen Helm. Uh, Stephen, the floor is yours. Excellent, thank you very much, Don. Thank you everybody for taking the time to, to join us this afternoon. And I think Don did a great job setting up a lot of what I'm gonna talk about today. Um, and that's really this idea of, of simplicity and how you can deliver simplicity to your security practice using the cloud. And so we'll talk to you about you know, how WatchGuard really views that and we'll, we'll use network security as our primary starting point for this conversation. I think you know, network security is still extremely important even with the distributed workforce that we all tend to be managing these days. The network's super, super important and is a valuable um, central point for getting a lot of threat intelligence out. And so we'll talk about some ways we can add some visibility capabilities there uh, to make that easier. And so for an, uh, for an agenda uh, to get us started today, we'll just start off with a, a brief discussion around this idea of complexity in the threat landscape and, and sort of how this is being viewed, some examples where um, complexity is really wrecking havoc and being a major challenge. And then we'll talk about the importance of really gaining clarity and control over your network, um, being able to manage it in a much easier fashion, uh, being able to, to, to diagnose if there are issues being able to report and get the visibility into what's actually occurring on your network. And we'll finish up with a, a discussion on what we call the unified security platform, an exciting initiative here at WatchGuard Technologies, really drives this idea of simplicity into the security space and, and, and um, give you an, a bit of a, an explanation of what we're doing there. Um, before I'll wrap up with a, a demo of WatchGuard Cloud, we'll, we'll jump into the interface, really show you what it looks like, what's possible, and give you a high-level overview of, of some of the things that you can do today in the WatchGuard Cloud platform. So let's go ahead and get started. Well, the first thing I want to talk about is actually, uh, it starts off with just a Pulse survey here. And, and Pulse is an organization that works with technology leaders all around the globe um, and actually has a platform for really soliciting their feedback and doing some research into what they're, how they feel about the dynamics, not just in security, but in IT and technology in the business arena at large. Um, and actually independent of us, they put out a, a, a report on ransomware. And one of the interesting things that came back is that uh, all of these respondents or a high, a high percentage of these respondents felt like the lack of a unified cybersecurity strategy is ultimately the number one reason that these victim or these organizations are falling attack falling victim to attacks like ransomware, right? And, and this unified strategy and this need for a unified strategy, I think really speaks to some of the complexity challenges that a lot of organizations are having. Um, you know, I, I talk about, especially in the last year, obviously the colonial pipeline attack uh, that occurred um, early last year, I believe it was in the May timeframe, late April timeframe, um, in which business systems were attacked using a legacy VPN um, that had an, a credential that was either stolen or acquired by some, some other means um, to actually introduce ransomware into the business systems of Colonial Pipeline. And obviously they provide a, a large amount of the, the gas and oil um, to the Eastern seaboard in the United States. And so, you know, a lot of people, they, they remember the impact of this breach. Uh, the oil pipeline went down um, and there was, uh, you know, gas lines and all of that. But they might not realize that actually the reason the pipeline went down in the first place was simply because the organization themselves, Colonial Pipeline, wasn't confident that they could prevent the cyber attack from hopping from their business systems 
to their oil, oil pipeline infrastructure. And so it's just out of that concern that they just shut down that infrastructure and took the burden of, 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 of um, shutting down that infrastructure, right? Uh, and that really, I, I think, again, speaks to a complexity challenge, right? They weren't confident enough that they could, uh, had, had the visibility and the management and the control over that oil pipeline network, as well as their business systems and the whole environment at large that they felt like they could, they, they could prevent these type of attacks. And, you know, Don, I know one of the things you had talked about when we were talking about this presentation uh, a few weeks ago um, was a complex example in, in Target, which I think, you know, a lot of us uh, are familiar with. It happened, I think it was about 2010. Um, but here's an organization, Target, uh, one of the largest retailers in the United States of America, millions of dollars invested in cybersecurity capabilities. And, and it was an, actually a, a contractor HVAC employee um, that uh, introduced the, the, the cyber attack into um, Target's infrastructure. So something that was really totally out of their band traditionally um, from a security perspective. And so ultimately, I just want you to leave with this understanding that you know, complexity is a major challenge in security and simplicity is, is ultimately security, right? We need to start thinking about simplicity as being an element of security going forward. And so what are some of the challenges with complexity, right? Uh, the first one is, you know, multiple point solutions, right? We've all, I think, understand that as our business has evolved and our relationship with technology within our business has evolved, our lines of business have demanded more technology to make themselves more efficient. Our response from a security perspective tends to be, hey, we'll find the solution that we need to plug this specific hole that has been opened potentially. Or we have a new uh, technology that we're bringing in, we need a new technology to secure that, uh, that um, uh, particular solution. And this is why we've stacked on so many point solutions over the years. Um, and, and this means that you have a team that's having to manage all of these diverse solutions, each with their own interface, which really requires you to learn this, uh, the, the language, the, the interface itself, how the product actually functions, just to become capable of really managing the security that it provides effectively. And this is a quite a burden, especially for teams who don't have the cybersecurity expertise and those skills readily at hand, right? Over 76% uh, 6 of businesses today are under-resourced when it comes to cybersecurity staff. And this is only getting worse. Every year they talk, there's a new study out about the millions of open headcount for cybersecurity skills in businesses all around the globe. Uh, and, and this is a major challenge, especially when you're not maximizing the potential of the skills that you do have. Um, so you know, having these multiple point solutions only makes that limited staff that you have that much more difficult or makes their job that much more difficult. And this really speaks to another challenge too, or, or perhaps the lack of, of something that could alleviate a lot of these challenges, and that's automation. Um, they rarely, uh, you know, leaders of these organizations, and you probably rarely have enough time to effectively review your logs um, and analyze what's going on in these environments to really understand, um, you know, how these individual point solutions are actually working and uh, working, and if they're uh, what they're actually trying to indicate to you as a, as its uh, overall security policy. Posture, right? And so, you know, automation can help in a lot of ways. Um, some of it is simply enabling you to block more threats, um, you know, from ever getting into your environment. Some of it is being able to, to do things like score the, uh, a potential indicator of a threat to say, hey, this is something suspicious. You should continue to look at this. Um, you know, some of it is, is just things like reporting. Right, um, the idea that you don't have to go in and do this manual process, you'll get a daily report, a weekly report, or whatever you want to do um, to go through that process. And, and this can ultimately all uh, alleviate a lot of the manual processes that your team would normally ha be having to do um, with, uh, with a solution that lacks automation. And again, this is another area where, you know, if you have automation in a unified platform where instead of these multiple point solutions, that automation capability can continue across the platform, meaning you can have some connection point between your various layers of, the, uh, of security um, to do things like threat correlation. And I'll talk about an example of you know, how WatchGuard does that later in the presentation. And then finally, you know, cost control. The average organization spends less than 2% of revenue on, on cybersecurity today. So a very small percentage, especially when you consider what the impact of the cybersecurity breach really can be. I mean, you look at something like a ransomware attack that'll take you totally offline 
for days, weeks at ends uh, 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 in some instances, right? What is the impact of that? So although the investment is very low, um, you really need to be able to maximize that investment. And, and, and that's not very possible when you use those multiple point solutions, when you don't have a team that's able to ramp up very quickly and understand how to function with these products and these solutions. And when those places of automation, which might be available in other solutions, simply aren't there um, to make the job easier for that team too. So, you know, complexity is a, obviously a major challenge um, and it's something that really is just growing and growing over time. And so, you know, some other ways where, where I think you, you can look at complexity and in, in this sort of exploding um, complexity challenge in, in businesses is really from the threat surface, right? If you look at, you know, the environments themselves, we're operating in more environments um, than we've ever operated today. You know, it used to be most of our users were connecting on-premise um, and using, you know, resources that were, you know, behind your, your, your network. Uh, now you're accessing things that are in the public cloud or in hybrid environments, you're using wireless connectivity that much more often. Each one of these has an impact on your security. Your users have changed too, right? I mean, it used to be more, again, on-site employees. You had some of those remote or mobile employees, the sales force perhaps who was working on the go quite often. Now everyone's really connecting remotely or, or the predominance of, of employees can be working um, remotely. And so that changes the dynamic of, of security obviously dramatically. Then things like contractors, you know, I mentioned the target attack a, a little bit earlier in the presentation, but I think that's really the first great example of a cyber attack driven ultimately by a contracting organization um, that was working with target just on their, their HV, their air conditioning units, essentially, right? Um, and, and, and just their technology stack themselves uh, made it possible to introduce a, a threat within the target environment. Now you have vendor representatives, public users, administrators. Each one of these has a different profile for security. And this is why you're starting to see a lot more risk-based security pr approaches become popular. It's the idea that you can really look at your user types and individual users possibly and, and apply risk-based scenarios to them to, to determine how you should go about securing them in their, in their current situation. And then the final uh, level here is, is really the, the devices themselves. And you know, obviously just the evolution of technology within businesses continues to be very aggressive. Um, you know, IoT devices is a great area where um, there's been a, an explosion of these types of devices within the workplace. And especially if you're talking about things like manufacturing environments, um, those types of, of things. And yet these are devices themselves which have typically very poor, limited security, and can have a massive impact on the security of your own environment, even being used to do things like introduce malware and other threats. And, and the sad thing is, you know, organizations today are really having to rely on yesterday's security platforms to deal with this growing threat surface, right? They're dealing with those fragmented systems um, with multiple solutions that are specialized, right? Um, that they've probably acquired from multiple vendors, right? Uh, they're missing some of the feeds, uh, the, the information that they might want um, if they wanted to patch those things into like a cloud service or something that was, was providing visibility and feed uh, opportunities. Not all of those integrations exist today with some of those solutions. And there's limited opportunity for customization more broadly to, for you to be able to architect the security that works for you and not really against your business. It doesn't have those integrations, doesn't have those API, APIs that might make you more effective in rolling out your security. And so these are re really significant challenges. And ultimately, as I said, these are, are scalability challenges and scalability and simplicity are so, so essential when it comes to securing your business. And so one of the things we're going to talk about today, just at a high level, is what WatchGuard's doing to, to really drive simplicity, not just with our network security product line. You probably, if you're on this phone call, you're familiar with the WatchGuard Firebox. This has obviously been our, our flagship um, uh, solution for, for two decades now. Um, maybe three decades, um, <laughs> and um, you know it's a it's a traditional you know firewall plus with you know all the layered security on top, a UTM NGFW type of solution. Um, but we also provide a, a comprehensive portfolio of solutions today, including multi-factor authentication, including endpoint security. And so, you know, our platform really important part to understand here. It's not just for managing net, our network security and our fireboxes today. You can actually manage your uh, multi-factor authentication, your Wi-Fi, uh, your endpoint uh, security can now be managed within this if you use WatchGuard solutions there. 
And then from a clarity and control perspective, this is really the, what the bulk of the presentation today is on. And that's really WatchGuard Cloud. This is, this is what our clarity and control story is. It's our single pane of glass where we feed all of our security solutions, all of our, uh, our, our intelligence and, and threat data into WatchGuard Cloud to provide that place for centralized policy management, threat remediation, visibility, and reporting. Um, and really streamline the process of managing your security stack with your WatchGuard solutions. And then really this bottom layer here is, is what I would consider our, our special sauce um, when it comes to WatchGuard and how we, we um, go about business. And the first one is shared knowledge. I'll, I'll talk about this in more detail later in the presentation, but it's really what, what's behind a lot of these concepts uh, like zero trust in XDR. Um, this idea that you have a, perhaps a persistent identity that's used as part of a, a variable for making security decisions, or it's simply correlating threat data from an endpoint to, to a network or a user's, uh, a user's behavior um, could be correlated with any one of those things. Um, and, and through this correlation, you can actually bubble up threats um, that you might have otherwise missed with those isolated solutions that aren't able to share intelligence across those layers. You know, operational alignments, again, more about the API access, those integrations uh, that's, that support um, for how you want to go about building your, your security stack and managing your security stack. And then finally, automation. I like to say, you know, at WatchGuard that automation is an ethos, right? Everything we do, we look at, is this something that we could be automating? Is this a, a process that we can remove from our, our customers having to go through and still maintain their security, still maintain um, the, the, the experience that they're expecting to have? Um, and so we really want to build not just security automation, but also business enabling automation um, in, into our security layers and into our solutions. And this is really our, our visionary um, statement around the unified security platform and, and how we aim to deliver simplicity in, in security management um, for you. So let's talk a little bit more about you know, what's possible uh, when, when we talk about WatchGuard Cloud and some of that clarity and control that I, I mentioned earlier. You know, again, WatchGuard Cloud is that centralized management platform for the entire unified security platform. Um, so all of our solutions feed up to that, not just the firewall. And I'll show you in the demo what that looks like when we, when we jump into it towards the end of the presentation. But this is your central authority for policy management, dissemination, and enforcement, which allows you to quickly enable and disable security services. I'll show you what that sort of looks like and some of the toggling that's possible in the demo. They also, it also supports zero touch deployment for things like network security, MFA, and endpoint. And so, you know, if you were opening a, a new remote location, a new remote office, as an example, and, and you wanted to uh, deploy a Firebox there to provide network security, our solution allows you to pre-configure that Firebox, send the device, you know, out to its location. You don't even need a, a security expert or a network expert to, to be there to receive it. Whoever's there can simply plug it into the wall um, for power, plug it into the network, um, and it can download its configuration for that zero touch deployment. Um, it's a powerful story. It's something we get with our MFA and endpoint security. It's something that I think was very relevant with uh, everybody being distributed over these last few years. And you know, Don off the start of the call mentioned alert fatigue um, as a major challenge that bi businesses are having. We've seen cyber attacks escalate dramatically in the last two years and you know, more and more uh, vulnerabilities as people work from home as well. So alert fatigue has is, is been a significant challenge in the in their recent um, time period. Uh, and so you know, having the ability to minimize alert fatigue with things like automation and just easier to understand vis uh, visualizations of which I'll show you, show you some in a little bit um, can be very, very instrumental here. And then integration with some of the RMM and PSA tools, the tools you might want to use to manage your devices and things like that. Uh, next is really using WatchGuard Cloud for that clarity and that, that visibility in, in not just to your network again, um, but to your entire organization's security posture. And so with WatchGuard Cloud, we make it much easier to identify actionable security trends, monitor the uh, efficacy of the services that you're using. You can also generate business and compliance as well as security reports. And we have a number of visualization tools within WatchGuard Cloud, which again, make it that much easier for you to make sense of what's going on within the environment. Um, and then on top of that, we have a bunch of built-in um, and ready to go dashboards and reports, again, that make that reporting process that much more intuitive. And 
you're able to get some reviews of each security layer on, on our dashboards. You can quickly identify issues and then even drill down into those issues. Um, help to get that uh, key findings across all your data, right? Bubble up those key findings like I mentioned earlier. And so this is sort of a, a different way to look at really how WatchGuard goes about delivering security in, in the average, um, you know, typical business environment, right? It's a bit of an abstraction here. Um, you know, on the left-hand side, we talk about user risk with our off-point solution. We have our endpoint solution on the bottom with device risk. These are feeding into WatchGuard Cloud here, um, which is, again, that organizational policy and control uh, a solution here in the middle. On the bottom, there's our, our threat sync solution. I'll talk about that in more detail. But it really brings our endpoint security and our network security together um, to share telemetry today. And this is something that we're, as I mentioned earlier, we're, we'll continue to expand on capabilities there. And then really from a network perspective, on the right-hand side here, um, the idea that our, our network security capabilities, things like web blocking, DNS filtering, all our anti-malware capabilities, that's something that you can be managing and controlling from WatchGuard Cloud as well as our Wi-Fi solutions, our access points, uh, VPN tunneling um, capabilities. And there's integration points between these things. You know, one of the, the most important ones, I think, in the last uh, couple of years has been the, the integration between our off-point solution and the Firebox itself for things like single sign-on, um, adding MFA to single sign-on, um, and, and really um, just allowing you to more integrate your, your multi-factor authentication solution into how you're managing access to your network via VPNs and, and RDP type of access. Um, very important. Um, and so, you know, the idea that we have this as one platform makes that type of integration possible and allows us to build some of those automations on top of it. And so, you know, I'm not going to, you know, uh, belabor the point on this slide, but I really like to put up this slide just to show, again, tremendous amount of value in this one platform uh, and capability in the, in the platform um, that WatchGuard is providing from WatchGuard Cloud today. You know, all the Firebox capabilities um, that you would come to expect from a firewall, um, all the way down to DNS filtering and, and, and some of the stuff that we do at DNS Watch for for. Um, blocking phishing attacks as an example. But then, you know, also remote access. I break this out separately on this slide just because it has been so critically important over the last two years. And so again, that integration between the Firebox um, and MFA allows you to do things like extend risk-based policies, integrate clientless VPNs, uh, has that SAML support, have all the broad integrations that you might expect um, that you, that you wanna be using um, for some of those access points. Uh, or, or, or access some of those applications. So again, unprecedented capability from really the, the, the platform that WatchGuard is providing today. So now let's talk a little bit more about the Firebox itself and, and you know, what, what matters here from a, a clarity and control standpoint and, and how we can um, get better, better visibility um, with WatchGuard Cloud. And so, you know, what makes the Firebox different? I think that one of our strongest stories is our high performance SSL TLS decryption. Um, so encrypted traffic to, uh, inspection. I'll talk a little bit about more uh, why that's uh, so important in, in a couple of slides. Um, we also have three layers of zero day protection. And so zero day malware specifically what is what I'm talking about here. Um, we don't have just you know, one layer for anti-malware capabilities, it's re really redundant layers with different levels of capabilities um, from cloud sandboxing to AI powered um, you know, blocking capabilities with intelligent AV. I mentioned our DNS filtering uh, um, solution, uh, DNS Watch. Uh, again, a great solution for blocking phishing attacks. If somebody were to receive an email um, and, and click a link, um, that, that domain request would be uh, recognized by the Firebox, cross-referenced with a, a database of known bad domains that are associated with phishing attacks. And then if we see that there is a connection between uh, one of the known malicious areas, we'll block uh, that actual connection. We also, we also take it a step further. Um, you know, that user who interacts and, and, and makes that click will actually receive a, a, a pop-up that will say, hey, um, you know, we, we caught that you, you accidentally clicked on this link um, that uh, was gonna take you to potentially a, you know, a phishing attack. Um, this has been determined to be malicious and then takes you through an educational process so they can better identify um, those potential threats in the future. And, you know, uh, with phishing, you know, user education is so, so critically important. So this really bolsters um, some of those user education uh, capabilities. 
you know, access portal, that remote access capability, um, the four mobile VPN uh, types I talked about, including Ike VT, Ike V2, those are standard capabilities that we, that we can provide with the, um, the WatchGuard Firebox platform. And then I, I mentioned, around, uh, again, the direct integration with Authpoint. So these are really the things that sort of sep separate us apart just on the Firebox overall. And you know, from a from a, a deployment model standpoint, from from folks who may not be aware on the call, you know, I mentioned that this is a you know a firewall plus. But really, what that looks like is you have layers of security built on top of the firewall itself, and each service adds specialized protection to enhance that enhance that firewall. Um, this was obviously the UTM idea, the Unified Threat Management Platform idea. Um, was very popular for a lot of the reasons I described earlier when I was talking about complexity is that there was all these different unique solutions for managing network security and it didn't make sense to have these different appliances, different pieces of software on different locations. So they started to unify them into, into firewall platforms just like WatchGuard did. And so, you know, uh, again, we have all of those layers of anti-malware capability, our gate gateway antivirus, intelligent AV, APT blocker, our threat detection and response threat sync solution as well. Each one of these is a layer that builds on top of the network and really acts as a gauntlet of inspection for all the traffic inbound and outbound um, as you're dealing with your security practice. And so the uh, you know, WatchGuard appliances conduct over 1 billion security scans every hour. So there's a tremendous amount of security scans going on on these devices on behalf of our clients today. You know, one of the things that I think is important to understand too um, is that we, you know, at WatchGuard, we typically offer um, our solutions as a, a basic security suite as well as our total security suite. And really, the strength of, uh, from a security perspective, and the the, the real, um, uh, you know, powerful security tools that we offer are all included in the total security suite. And um, I like to sort of look at some of the historical data that we were able to get from our Firebox feeds. And if you look at some of that data. You see that with the average firebox with the total security suite blocked nearly 3,000 more attacks, including things like zero day attacks, than those did with just the basic security suite. And so, you know, yeah, I have this graph here. You can see Intelligent AV is the, the, the thin blue line there. But then APT blocker, I think, is really our, our strongest detection technology, um, blocked a, a, or caught and blocked a number, you know, 2,600 per year attacks here. Um, so it's a significant difference um, in effectiveness from a security perspective when you add those additional advanced security solutions in the total security suite. You know, I also mentioned, um, you know, encrypted traffic inspection and, and why this is so important. Uh, but, you know, if you look at, at the modern business and, and what their traffic type looks like today, I, I think Goog Google says on average eight, they have about 80% of their traffic, which is encrypted. Um, meaning that it would, if that traffic is it has malware with inside inside of it and it's not being inspected, you wouldn't be able to see what's going on uh, in that encrypted channel. And every quarter, WatchGuard um, actually puts out what we call our Internet Security Report, and, and this is actually a an opt-in um, based on opt-in feed feed data from our our Firebox customers. Um, who say, okay, we, we want to participate and it's anonymized and they just allow us to sort of understand what's going on in the fireboxes, um, it, you know, from a, from a log perspective and do some analysis thereafter. And one of the things that we've sort of tracked over the last three years is the prevalence of malware coming across encrypted channels. And I, I believe it was this time last year, uh, it was around 60% um, uh, was the, uh, the um, average that a business would see um, was malware being delivered during via, via encrypted channels. Our most recent report was 91.5% of all malware comes across uh, encrypted channels. Now, th that's incredibly concerning information, especially when you look at the fact that 64% of encrypted malware was classified as zero day. That means the real nasty stuff, the stuff that might even be designed for your business or uh, tailored somewhat for your business to look unique, um, that is 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 being um, you know sort of Trojan horsed, if you will, using encrypted channels. And I also find it very concerning that you know 36% were known threats hidden in encrypted traffic because again, 
If you're not using uh, encrypted traffic inspection on your firewall, that means all that no those known threats would get right by uh, your network protections there that would be able to uh, be able to block some of those things. So, you know, I encourage you to really think about encrypted traffic and inspecting that traffic as a key component of your visibility challenges. Now let's talk a little bit about uh, network visibility with the Firebox and, and WatchGuard Cloud and, and really what's possible before we jump into uh, a bit of a demo. So we'll talk about some of the, um, the different reports and, and dashboards that I'll, I'll show you once we, we actually jump into the tool and, and, and sort of walk you through it in more of a live environment. Uh, but just to sort of give you a bit of a preview uh, of what you'll, what you'll see. Um, the first one is Firewatch, and, and this filters traffic to instantly highlight really the most critical information on, on active users and connections, and presents it again in a very visual way. You can see sort of the tiles here um, that show, you know, really what the, the, the amount of traffic being generated as well as where it's coming from and some details there. So it easily allows you to answer who's consuming the most bandwidth, you know, are there unusual patterns here? You know, what are the most popular places that my users are going to? What applications are really bogging down my systems here? Those are very important questions, not just for security, but overall the, the, your network health of your business. And, you know, presenting them in a very visual format here, I think makes it much more intuitive and, and easy to understand. Policy map is, is really one of the most popular visual, visualization tools that we include in WatchGuard Cloud. Really is the brains of the firewall. It allows you to visually see how your traffic flows across each of your policies. Uh, and, and this allows you to see very quickly which policies are being used and how they might be impacting your traffic as well as your security. Um, and it also makes it easier to find misconfigured policies and drill down so you can perform some optimizations there. So when we get in the tool, I'll show you how this works. It's, uh, I think, a very impressive sort of visualization um, that we've seen some, from other industries. But I think, you know, using it here is a very effective way, um, specifically when, when looking at network policies. You know, threat map, I think, is pretty straightforward. Um, you know, if you wanted to get a sense of where your traffic's coming from, um, where your threats may be coming from, um, you wanted to see how much traffic was coming from potentially countries that you don't allow access to uh, from or, or connectivity from, uh, this is what that provides. It allows you to get a very, very quick uh, map view uh, with some color coding. Uh, to see you know where where your impact is is, is coming from and and allow you to drill down for more details there. Then executive dashboards. So there's a, there's a number of uh, details that you can get from these types of dashboards. But really, the purpose here is to have massive amounts of data that that we can make very um, very easy to understand and bubble up things like top users, top destinations, top applications, top domains. Right. Um, so it's more of a list um, than a visualization here. Um, but again, you can drill down, get more details, and it makes it very easy to understand quickly from a single dashboard view. Detailed traffic and service reports. Uh, so you know, you, you'll get uh, reports for things like bandwidth, VPN bandwidth, then things like blocked applications. All of our security services will provide a sort of a line graph here, a time uh, line graph with two colors, the red and the green, you know, for scans and denied packets or whatever the, the specific service is. Um, but again, gives you a very nice historical view um, for you to look at, you know, what's gone on in your network from a security perspective and make very uh, critical decisions as you look at this dashboard. We also have a web audit report, and, and this allows you to view the general activity of your network environment, right? Just more generally, how are people interacting with your environment? This is much more of sort of a log drop, if you will, of, of all, all of these type of details. Subscription services. So again, if you're looking at those security layers, um, you can look like APT blocker or web blocker, uh, you know, our IPS service, same type of visualization timeline that I was just talking about with those services here. And one of the things too, I think is, is very interesting is, um, is this concept of XDR. And I think it's important when we, we have a, con, a conversation around visibility, even if we're just talking about the network. 
Now, 50% of mid-market security buyers today have said that they in, will leverage XDR to consolidate technologies such as endpoint and cloud security by, by 2027, right? Um, so this is very interesting. There's a consolidation going on around sort of this XDR concept, right? The idea that, hey, if you can integrate some of your security layers to make them more effective, that's all the reason why we should consolidate. And that's something we definitely agree with. And, and WatchGuard has felt that way for a, a, quite some time. Um, if you're familiar with WatchGuard um, and, and have been for a while, hopefully you're familiar with our solution, ThreatSync. It was originally called Threat Detection and Response. Um, and that was really this idea that we could have a, an endpoint host sensor um, that could take some telemetry data from an endpoint and then send it up to the cloud to be correlated with details from the Firebox and, and correlate those data points into a single incident. Uh, if you will, that we can then score uh, based on severity. And, and basically what I want you to understand is ThreatSync really works behind the scenes to do this correlation using artificial intelligence, automation, um, to, to, to share this knowledge and to give you a very clear threat score um, that makes things intuitive and easy to understand. And you can even build your remediations against these threat scores, right? So let's say you get a threat score eight and you wanted to you know, quarantine a file. Um, you can set it up to do that um, automatically if you like. And, and the nice thing about ThreatSync is this is where we're going to start feeding all of our different telemetry from our other solutions. And so the graphic on the right-hand side here, this is a visionary look to be sure. Um, you know, to, we, today we have the Firebox, we have our endpoint telemetry from our host sensors. Um, we're going to add our Wi-Fi capabilities. We're going to add more user-based variables with our off-point capabilities and feed them into the same engine, which can analyze, score, and, and sort of correlate all of these data points together for a more clear vision of the security posture uh, of your business. So this is an exciting tool, and it's really our, our approach to, to XDR um, in the watch card stack. Let me interrupt for a second real quick. Sure, sure. Yeah. Um, answering a question that came through was really about how much of WatchGuard is integrated uh, with the WatchGuard cloud, what services are there. Uh, to answer that, I would say that that it's all there now. So WatchGuard has yep. done an incredible job of focusing on cloud integration. And so as part of your regular subscription for not no extra fee, if you had the WatchGuard full cybersecurity stack, you could manage it all in the cloud now. So the firewall and the reporting and all that in the cloud, the uh, TDR in the cloud, WatchGuard EPDR, endpoint protection and detection response in the cloud, and the WatchGuard wireless security and Wi-Fi in the cloud, uh, as well as OffPoint, of course, which is the multi-factor platform. So basically now it's it's all there and there's nothing we have that's really not cloud enabled for management reporting and uh, uh, kind of uh, integration. So hopefully that answers your question. You got anything you wanna add on that? No, I, I, think, I think you're exactly right. Oh, is there... follow up on that. Yes, uh, Todd, yes, you can log completely to the cloud instead of Dimension. You can also fork it and do both. So you can have cloud and Dimension, um, or you can have cloud only, your choice. And on the cloud, you get a month for free, no charge for a month. That's in the box. If you want to go longer, we do have the ability because we're using uh, AWS. We just basically sell you an AWS subscription just for cloud log storage. You can go as long as you want on that. But yes, 100% straight to cloud if you like. Excellent, yeah. Thank you. All right, thanks, buddy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and, and so, you know, Don mentioned our off point solution, but one thing to understand here when it comes to WatchGuard Cloud is that was really built initially for the off point solution, for our multi factor authentication uh, offering to the market. And, and what's nice about that is that it's given us a strong foundation to, to really roll out user focused types of security, right? Uh, because we're able to, to identify our users and apply other variables to very strongly est establish their user identity, as well as now having the endpoint product line, we really can to have a very effective way to you know, identify your user and then do a risk profile of that user based on you know, their apps, applications they're using, the, the profile of the, of the endpoint that they're using, um, things like their behavioral analysis potentially, and a network location, where they're authenticating from. All these different variables can be used to help us establish the risk profile of a user before granting them access to resources, whether they're the in the cloud, your public cloud applications, or those, they're those internal applications and things behind the firewall. And so this is, I think, a very strong story for WatchGuard and one you hear a lot more about as we go forward. 
All right, so that brings us really to uh, to the demo spot here. Um, uh, one of the things I would want to encourage you guys to do, you had some great questions about WatchGuard Cloud, but I have the URL up here on our, on our website um, for the WatchGuard Cloud demo environment, and I, I've given you the username and passphrase here, so you, you, know, you don't have to fill out our form or anything if you just wanted to go to this link or uh, or, or even go to the resources and demos section on the website if you wanted to navigate there. Um, you can enter these credentials and, and play with the tool and, and see really what's available today in WatchGuard Cloud and, and, and have some fun uh, messing with it. You really can't mess it up. They've locked it down a little bit, so you can't uh, mess it up, as you'll see. Um, but yeah, I think it's a very powerful tool if you want to explore with what's possible today in a live environment. So let me go ahead and, um, and bring up my, uh, my own uh, WatchGuard Cloud uh, environment here and and so this is what the the page looks like ignore all this here um, the page looks like for the demo itself um, but here is the dashboard um, when you land in a watch guard cloud this is what you'll see right off the bat and and so um, each one of these tiles I think provides some very interesting relevant information and to be clear this is again not just the firebox we're showing all of our security services on this dashboard um, today so you get obviously an aggregated uh, amount of uh, alerts over here um, across your different solutions. We have our dark web scan tool, and this allows you to actually enter an email or a domain that you manage and get a download of all of the credential breaches that include those domains, um, you know, pr presented to you very easily. Uh, and so this is a great tool if you wanted to spot check, you know, if, you're, if you've been part of a, a, a breach or your organization has been part of a breach, and our Threat Labs team maintains this um, for us. You can see all of your Firebox license details here, right? So all your active cloud devices, which ones have total security and basic security. Their status, are they connected, they're not connected, have they never been connected? Same thing with the access points, right? Your license details. Um, then we start to show things like authentication, you know, failed authentication, um, how many have been successful, uh, and then resources. What are the most popular resources they're getting into and how many of these pushes have been denied? Uh, as you scroll down, you start to see more of our data points around our endpoint offerings. Here is the, the indicators and in our, our host status for our ThreatSync solution, our TDR solution today. Um, but we also have our endpoint solutions, our EPDR solutions. You can see all the protected devices, those with errors, um, those uh, that aren't licensed, all these details, again, visually represented. And with each one of these, you can click and drill in to learn more. Also here on the bottom, some to our most recent additions um, to, to the endpoint solution in, in WatchGuard Cloud, it's patch management capabilities and then full encryption. Again, this is part of our, our endpoint solution. Um, and these are modules that are available, but again, they're, they're in WatchGuard Cloud as well. So that's just a, so a, a quick look at the dashboard. Now let's go ahead and look at what it looks like when we start to look at more of the, the firewall type of devices. So, here we go, if I, if I click into monitor and then devices, uh, you can see right away here on the left-hand side, I'm pretending, pretending to be Acme Manufacturing. I guess they make all the, the road runners, well, what was that? The Coyotes tools against the road runners. I think I was always Acme. Um, but some interesting things here to point out, right? You have these different folders and they, they have them set up here for states, but you could do it however you want. It makes sense for, for this example. Um, they have an office in California. So if I click this, I can say, oh, well, this office is using a Firebox V, right? Um, if I click this uh, to Oregon, I can see, okay, I have a T20, a T40 device in this location. And I can expand all of these out and I can see, okay, this one has a, a demo a M300, but it's not connected. And hey, I even have my access points in here too, right? Very nicely organized. Um, you can you sort of... Uh, open and close these different folders if you want and, and, and sort it. But then, again, you know, if you click this, it's an aggregate for all of California. This is an aggregate for all of Washington, right? And then Acme, if I want to look just overall the entire organization, I, I'm able to do that here um, at the top uh, of the device. Okay, so or of, of the screen, if you will. Um, so this is the dashboard you would see when you when you initially land here. Um, again, some of the same things that you saw on the the overall dashboard, but now you start to see some of the security service data bubble up. And again, this is aggregate across all of these different devices um, that that are using these services. So you can see 20 blocked botnets and and web block or how many blocks are there intrusions that have been prevented. And then things like malware, not just from one service, but you know, all of your solution services combined, you know, what's your malware picture look like? And again, this is just for today, right? Uh, I can come up here 
I can drop down and, and look at yesterday, 24 hours, you know, all of these different ranges, do a custom range if I wanted um, to, to, to expand or, or, or change what I'm looking at specifically. Now let's go ahead and look at, at some of the dashboards that I mentioned a little bit earlier. Excuse me. Um, here we go. So this is the, uh, the executive dashboard. I'll take a little bit to load here. Okay, here we go. And so this, again, it, it's going to show you all of your, your top countries where are generating traffic, you know, how many bytes, how many hits, the top clients, so who's doing most of this generation, where are they going, what are the URLs that they're, categories that they're going to. Um, and, and some of these categories are, are, are things like, you know, social media and, and, and uh, gaming and pornography, what have you. i um, get a very clear picture of that. Um, top destinations based on, you know, IP address. Um, top applications being used, application categories and protocols, right? So this is a pretty raw visual or, or, or tool to just get you um, those details and, and sort of highlight the most important or most significant um, creators or generators of those variables. If we look at um, security and, and load this one up, we start to see, again, uh, a similar view, but now with uh, more security in, uh, indicators, right? So what are the top blocked countries? Here we have Russia and China, um, where we have nearly 200 blocks from Russia. Top malware that's been blocked by our, our advanced solution, APT blocker. Um, blocked botnet sites, clients that are being blocked. Uh, destinations where we're being blocked. All of this information where the Firebox has actually taken an action um, to, to block an attack and, and prevent it from getting into the network. And if you look at the, the subscription database or the subscription dashboard here, um, again, these services with this timeline view, um, denied requests, total requests here, of viruses detected and, and scanned. Um, again, a, a nice historical view. Actually, let's go ahead and see what this looks like yesterday. Uh, to, so we have a, I should have a full day of capture of data here. Um, rather than a timeline that cuts off a little early. Um, yeah, and so you, you can see uh, just what this really indicates to you, um, you know, the, 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 how the networks behaved and interacted from a security perspective. Now let's get into a couple of the ones I, I talked to uh, in a little bit more detail. Um, the threat map, I think, you know, this one is, is pretty straightforward. So uh, once it loads, I'll, I'll move on fairly quickly. But again, this shows you yesterday where your traffic was coming from. You can even click into the, the specific country and I can see, okay, this fellow sitting somewhere over in St. Petersburg is hit, trying to hit me 14 times for whatever reason, and we've been blocking him. I don't know that this actually in St. Petersburg, but it's a guess. Um, so yeah, pretty straightforward, I think, um, from, a, from a threat map perspective. Firewatch, um, again, uh, you know, a nice visual with the tiles of, um, you know, all of your network behaviors. You know, here's their source. You can see that um, who's the source of your traffic, uh, where they're going um, from, a, from a, you know, sort of a tile perspective. And you can also look over here. Actually, move that. You can even look, you can look at this view from bytes and you can even look at it from connections. If this was something that was more interesting to you, you can quickly come over here. And we have a couple of different tabs um, that allow you to, to get more details if, if you want. Uh, and then I think the last one I'll show you here, and, and uh, this to me is, is the most impressive one, if, if I can get it to load here, there we go, um, is, is the, the policy map, right? And so we're looking at connections here and we can see here on the left-hand side, what are the interfaces that I'm using, all my pre-established interfaces, and then the policies, right? So where, where are they going? Um, so this is my policy around any firebox and allowing them to go to trusted locations, right? Um, I can even come up here and instead look at something like subscription services if I wanted to look at that. So I can click this and it'll take a, a little bit to load here. Um, but it should actually show you um, the same type of visual, but what, yeah, here we go. So you can see, here's our internal traffic, here are our domain users out, and here are the various services that their traffic is going through, right? So a lot has been scanned by application control, you know, um, here and being allowed. Then you get down here and you see things like denied packets from intrusion prevention um, and things like that. So it's a smaller percentage here, obviously, but again, just another, I think, powerful way to visualize uh, your, your security and, and uh, how your network is actually behaving when it comes to security. So with that, you know, I think, um, I think we'll take any questions anybody might have, or if anybody wanted me to try and jump to something, I'm happy to open the floor for that.
Okay. Doesn't look like any questions are coming in. Like I said, this um, this is an environment that's available to you. Uh, you can go on and, and um, log in with the credentials that I provided in the presentation and uh, you know play around with it. And and you know if you you're familiar with Dimension, I do you know encourage you to go on there and see you know what a lot of what what the value of Dimension has been moved over to WatchGuard Cloud. Um, so I, I think you'd be very pleased with what you see uh, in what you're uh, able to do there. Yeah, absolutely. And um, I, when I send you guys the link to the edited video, I will include the um, the links that he included, um, how to get into the demo. But we are happy to walk you through this ourselves, do a, um, more depth with a, one of our senior engineers. They can walk you through the whole process as well. Stephen, in this um, in the demo one, can you actually go into some of the other features? Show them a little bit of the off point configurations sure, sure. or anything yes. else that can be leveraged in here. Just thinking. yeah, Quick yeah. Look well, at so that. I showed you the monitor. Yeah, yeah. I showed monitor. Let's let's jump into um, to some of the configure. And I, I'm by no means the demo guy, so bear with me, <laughs> folks. Um, so, like, if we looked at configure, right? That we we really just talked about visualization and, and reporting and, and reporting. that kind of stuff. Yeah. Right, um, and so um, you know we can look at device configuration, and uh, this will actually look at this individual device, and, and this gives you a very quick snapshot at how the policies and the security services on the specific T40 device located in Oregon, um, how they're being used, and, and how they're the, the, actually really what the template is um, for this specific box. Right, so we have content scanning here, we have network blocking here and exception. So these are actually the services that are, are, are running on the device. And uh, I mentioned before the, the little demo that some of this stuff is locked down so people don't come in here and, and mess it up. Um, but this is, um, this is really what it looks like if you wanted to come in and activate these services, right? Um, you would be able to come in and simply toggle on gateway antivirus, toggle on intelligent AV, toggle on APT blocker, much simpler process possible there. And you can also do things like adjust your my, uh, file scan there, um, right, uh, right there. Um, so that toggle is something that you'll see uh, consistently throughout WatchGuard Cloud for, for adding services. It's really like turning on a light switch for some very powerful security, um, quite frankly. Um, same thing here with, uh, with the botnet detection and, and uh, things like intrusion prevention. Um, we also allow for the creation of, of firewall templates. Um, let me see if I can get to a, uh, an example of that. And, and what this allows you to do is essentially pre-establish templates um, and then have devices essentially subscribe to that, that template um, and have them deployed. And allows you to have a bit of a, a, fire, a, a hierarchy here, right? Um, where you might have, you know, one device that's uh, using, uh, you know, configuration A and other that's using configuration B and some that are using, you know, policy uh, templates from, from sort of both of them, um, depending on, on how you have that firewall configured and, and your different, um, you know, your different traffic channels. Um, so, you know, that, that, that's a powerful feature and it's something that allows you to, to um, establish a template. Um, then if you wanted to tweak it, that that template will automatically be updated to all the other devices that subscribe to it. So again, that's a big story around automation. You don't have to go to each one of these devices and necessarily update them um, to do the same update over and over and over again, if you if you will. Absolutely. Go back into configurations and kind of I, I believe it lets you see the uh, maybe even off point or even the endpoint protections. Oh, sure, sure, sure. Yeah. So from an off point perspective, right? Yeah. Um, well, let's let's look at monitor maybe from yeah. that that might be more appealing, right? So looking at off point again, visualizes some things for you. You can see your user activity, inactive, active, what resources they're using. Um, denied pushes, you know, this is maybe an example where somebody received the push that they that they didn't actually proactively start uh, and they want to deny it, or or maybe they entered their wrong password and, and that was a denied push, and that could be an indicator that somebody is trying to maybe brute force even um, their password. Um, you can see more user activity. Um, again, by user uh, looks at, um, you know, how many times they've authenticated specifically um, and uh, and you can also look at um, this information uh, from their authentication behaviors, right? So same data, sort of presented in a different style with this, you know, bar graph at the top, success and failure. But then each one of the details around, you know, what resource were they trying to access? How are they trying to go about accessing it? Whether or not it was successful. Um, resource activity. 
you know, really the same thing, looking at those resources that are at being accessed and who is accessing them, um, all, all of those type of details. I'll also show you, you know, the endpoint security solution. So our endpoint is, is our newest um, addition to, to the WatchGuard offering, right? And so the way it works now is when, when you use it from WatchGuard Cloud, you'll automatically pump over to this endpoint protection and uh, detection response um, interface, right? There's no need to log in again. All that is handled right there for you. Um, and you can jump in and get all of these great details around uh, your endpoint status, right? And so a nice visualization of all the computers you're protecting, what their status is, malware activity, um, you know, all the, the, the different programs that are being blocked, um, indicators of attack. This is great because it actually maps all of this to the MITRE framework all of these endpoint indicators to, to the MITRE framework. And then I think one of the ones that people are really excited about is patch management. Um, patching so, so important for maintaining security posture. Um, so many exploits that we see are, are just unpatched systems ultimately. And so this is a great tool for you looking at all your Windows computers um, to see what's patched, what's not, um, what's critical, what's uh, maybe can wait a little bit um, and allowing you to take some action there. So. Um, yeah, and you'll see this further, even more be integrated into WatchGuard Cloud, take on more of a look and feel um, from WatchGuard Cloud. Uh, but we're, we're very pleased to have it in the interface, so it's very easy transition to get over here and, and work with those solutions. Fantastic. Um, mm -hmm. I haven't seen any more questions. Looks like we're coming up right on the hour. We'll give everybody a few more minutes. If you have anything else you would like Stephen to get into, and those few other questions I'll get back to you guys with. Um, since I don't have the answers for those right now, I'll talk to some of the senior guys on our team. All right. Looks like that's probably it. Stephen, we do appreciate you joining us today. And thank you, everybody, for attending. We appreciate everybody um, coming with us this afternoon. If you have any questions, again, let us know, and we'll get back to you with all of this. But with that, we're going to go ahead and wrap up this webinar. Thank you again. Thanks, Stephen. everybody. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye. <laughs>